the Vine Morning Show on a Monday. And those watching on Vine YouTube this morning here on our Vine YouTube channel and also Cable Channel uh, 15 this morning on New Wave Cable Channel 15. Thanks for tuning in today. It's the Vine Morning Show on a Monday, and I'm Mark along with Laura Greenhouse. Laura, good morning and welcome in this morning. Yes, good morning to you, Mark. Hey, uh, you know, that was, uh, I, I was reading this and it was like, man, that really was powerful. Mm-hmm. That was good. Yeah, that yeah. was really but good. It, but it is. All sins are equal in God's mm-hmm. eyes. And yes. there, you know, it's something we always, you know, we always need to re- remember to look at those uh-huh. passages there in 1 uh-huh. John chapter 5, verse 16, and then of course, Romans six twenty three talks about for the wages of sin is death, and then the other one was First John chapter thirteen verse fifteen. So okay. there all we right. go. All yeah. sins are equal yes. in God's eyes. This I've morning. always heard that, but it's so hard to fathom it, mm-hmm. isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it sure is. It and sure is. Only uh, a God in heaven could could have that approach. Could exactly. Have that way of thinking, because mm-hmm. in our human minds, like oh. oh how can that be? That guy, he's he's way worse than that guy. Mm, <laughs> you know, yeah. we do that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so. we do. Yeah, and we got to quit looking at it that way. <laughs> oh, no, know. it's not right. It's not right, but but you're exactly right. We do. Yeah. You know, we think, but no, that's what that's what Romans six twenty three right. states. You know, we've all sinned, fallen short of the go- glory of God, and yes. for the wages of sin is death. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, right. Hey, it's uh, Monday, and we've got a lot of interesting yes. things to talk about okay. this morning. All right. Well, All right. I'm going to let it rip. Um, Proverbs is the first verse that I have written down here, and I'll read it. Proverbs 4:23. Watch over your heart with diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. And a critical spirit has just been thrown in my lap several times this week. And, you know, when, when I come here, I want to talk about what's happened to mm-hmm. me. What things have I been faced with, good or bad, or have I seen somebody else get hit with, or, you know, I just just want to share it. And so I want to tell you what happened to me Uh last Monday night. Okay, Okay. sure. All right, well, there's this couple, and uh, they don't live in our neighborhood, but I've noticed they've walked by our house a few times, and I thought, I need to invite them to church. And I put it off the first two times. I wasn't sure if it was... I didn't really know the man, but but the woman, I did know her. Very sweet, precious person. And and so the third time, here they come. And I'm like, oh, I really don't want to. <laughs> you know how you just like, oh, I'd like sure. to do this or that. This is what I want to do. And uh, not that I didn't want to talk to him, but, you know, you got to stop what you're doing. And so anyway, I, I went and hid in my garage. This is the truth, Mark. <laughs> This is the truth. You hid your garage. I hid okay. in my garage till they got by because I was out there dinging around doing sure. something. And then I just couldn't do it. I'm like, okay, oh, I got to go. I got to go ask them. I know once I start talking, I'll have a great time and be glad sure. that I did. So I walk out there and I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, and and um, how have you been? I haven't talked to this little gal in a long time. And so I said, are you going to church anywhere? I knew I needed to invite them to church. And I said, well, I, I wanted to invite you to our church. Well, here goes the husband. And I mean, he railed about every church, and this church was no good, and that church was no good, and this church did this, and that church did that. Mm. And I'm like, oh dear, you know, and I'm, I'm kindly listening sure. to him, and, you know, trying to, you know, offer a few words here and there to change his mind. Well, then he says something about, um, um, do I listen to AFR? And I said, well, no, I used to, I don't anymore. And then he calls a name out which is one of the names of our people. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, well, yeah, I, I, I know him. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean 90.9 The Vine? No, I don't. That place is a joke. Everybody there is a joke. That's mm. what he said to me. Really? And I'm like, oh, well, wow. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't say anything sure. back to him. And I thought, okay, you know, maybe something's hurt his feelings, you know, trying to kind of draw it out of him. Not, nothing. I didn't get any good, solid evidence against mm-hmm. us at all. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he goes on and talks about every preacher he can think about. And this one does this and this one does that and just slammed everything you possibly could. Well, Mark, by that time, I had some good righteous anger going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible describes in Ephesians 4, I believe it is, about the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, does it describe it right. Fiery darts, 
flaming arrows mm-hmm. because that's what I felt. That's what uh, you felt. I was going to say a bit. Yeah. I did. I mean, just like he just threw a handful of darts mm-hmm. at my chest. And I thought, okay, God, all right. And so at the end of the conversation, after I had listened to him just blah, 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 blah about everything, I said, so you guys aren't going to church anywhere? No. And I said, well, let me tell you something. If you're not teaching a Sunday school class, if you're not driving a bus, if you're not playing a part of any kind, you need to shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I told him. You know, we talked last week about Mm -hmm. some battles are worth fighting. Some are not. If it's blue or green, who cares? But when somebody is tearing down the faith, tearing down every church, every preacher, radio stations, everybody that's trying to make a difference, and you're sitting at home on Sundays, you have not the right to complain. And I thought, you know, what must be in this person's heart? You know, Mm -hmm. that all of this, everything came out while his sweet little wife just stood there meekly and and you could see the hurt in her eyes. Sure. But I say this for a reason. Uh, Mark, I think it's all right to defend the faith. I think it's all Amen. right to get angry. Yes. And, and, you know, when, when he talks about the vine, he's talking about my family mm-hmm. and my claws were coming. Sure, <laughs> sure. But I, I didn't yell and I, I didn't say, you know, any filthy words or anything like that. But I felt the need to combat that. Right. I really did. Yeah. And I said, I've heard you talk bad about every preacher, every church. And, you know, when somebody finds fault with everything, you know, this is wrong, this person's wrong, that's wrong. Maybe the problem is you. It's an underlying problem in that person. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I fully agree with that and believe that. I yeah. do too. And, you know, I looked at our church on Sunday, and I don't know what it is, if, it, if it's the weather or everybody's trying to get a vacation in, but there weren't very many people these past few weeks. Mm. And I couldn't help but look at those empty seats and think, where are you that belongs in this chair? Where are you that belongs here? And this row here, this row, this, every row that's just completely empty. Where are you today? Mm. You who are supposed to be here. And, you know, you can think of a number of reasons why they're not here. You know, are they at the lake? Are they on vacation? Okay, they might be visiting another church. Mm. Or they might be laying in bed or just watching TV or doing something they want to do. Is probably the more likely of the choices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I just kind of got to thinking with this young man, how many people are thinking the same thing? I can't go there because you guys do this and you do that and you do this and you let the kids be a little too loud and and you're a little too flamboyant. You know, what? Mm -hmm. You think that's going to hold up in court the day we go Mm -hmm. stand before our judge? That's right. You know, and I did tell him that. I said, you're the priest provider and protector of that home. And if you're not taking your family and leading your family to church, you, you, sir, will be judged for that. Mm -hmm. And I said, as far as hypocrites in the church, I'm a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites. And if you want to focus your eyes on the sins and the imperfections of the church, then you're focusing it on the wrong place. Mm. And you need to focus it on Jesus Christ, whom is coming very, very fast, I might add, and he's not going to like this. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to like a lot of things about me. But if you don't have a church, you know the old saying, Mark, if you don't have a job, your job is finding a job. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a church, your job on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night is to find a church Mm -hmm. and just go try them out. And sometimes it takes a while, and you're going to find imperfections and imperfect people. There's a whole group of it. All over. All over, exactly. So I want to... I want to encourage people, don't look through a critical glass at the church. Don't look through a critical uh, pair of glasses at your preacher. He's human. Mm -hmm. He makes mistakes. And there's going to be this going on and that going on. We can't stop at all. Mm -hmm. We can't. But can we stand up to our attackers? Should we? Should. Yes. Should we? Mm -hmm. All right. I like this right here. Jesus is amazing. Matthew 12, 34, you brood of vipers. How can you know who are evil? Who are how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. 
Can you imagine him telling you, brood of vipers? Oh, I would have loved to have mm. been there. Mm. I mean, you want to talk about shock. They were probably shocked. Well, I'm sure they were, yeah. I'm sure. But, you know, I mean, Jesus had a, a strong tongue. And so I have to look. I didn't feel bad about saying that. I questioned myself a little, but I didn't feel bad about saying that because I think We've got to have a spine these days. We've got to stand up these days. We've got to, we got to defend the faith, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, I agree with that, yeah. Okay. And what you did with this young gentleman, too, was uh, something that, that he needed to hear. And okay. whether, whether it soaked in on him or not, that is something that the Holy Spirit will have to work on him. Right. Right. I would hope it would. Yes. And yes. my, you know, my my question would be, what has anyone ever done to offend him? Yes, right. That would have been my question. Yes. And and lay the cards out there on the table for him to come and answer. Right. And give a legitimate reason, and right. then sit down in love and discuss it. Right. Right. If you're able to do that. You Absolutely. Know. Yeah. And I was looking for like a legitimate reason against us, and and I couldn't. I couldn't hear one. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the conversation, I let him know loud, well, not loud, but I let him know Mm -hmm. clearly that I am part of the vine. Sure. And his eyes got bigger than saucers, and I wasn't going to say anything. But after it just went so long, he just kept kept bombing God's people. Just bomb, Mm. bomb, bomb, bomb. And if he's saying it to me, you know he's saying it to 10 other people when he gets the opportunity. And I just feel like that we got to stand in the gap. we got to hold up for the truth and and what's right. And Rodney speaks often about contending for the faith. Mm -hmm. And I felt like at that moment I needed to contend for the faith. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not doing this to get rich, Mark. We all know how much we make around here. We, we know. Yeah. We're doing this because we love God and we want to get the word out. We want to encourage people, lift them up, um, motivate them, inspire them, and give them happenings that maybe they aren't hearing and how quickly the world is truly um, coming apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure and is. So yeah. anyhow, that was on my heart. It was really a, a, a nail, but it was good for me. Isn't it good? After you, af, and after after this was all over with, and then like 30 minutes later, you felt good about yourself because, I did. because you were standing firm on God's word. You stood for what you believed. It's like you said in Ephesians, you're putting on the armor of God. Yes, and that's right. what we have to do. Sometimes right. we let that guard down, right. and we don't stand up for what what not only we believe in, but what the Word of God says. Yes, absolutely. And you know, when he first threw that in my face, my first initial reaction, I'm going to get you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to, ooh, but, but I, I held it in. Sure. I held it in, and I waited for for the right moment, and when I spoke back to him, it was firm. Mm-hmm. It was firm, and he could tell that I was not very happy. But at the end, I told him, I'm not angry with you. And when I invited you to our church, I meant it. Sure. And I want you to come. I'm not angry, but I listened to you, and I felt like that I had the right to speak back. Absolutely, yeah. And so anyhow, but just to encourage other people, contend for the faith, don't be afraid. It's all right to have some godly guts, Mm -hmm. you know? Well, there are so many things going on right now that people are shying away from those godly guts because of things happening in the world, and that's that's wrong. We need to stop in our shoes, yes. turn right around, and stand up for what God wants us to stand that's up right. for. That's right. There are so, just so many things going on that mm-hmm. that is that's being taken away from us, right. and we can't allow that. We have right. to fight for it. Mm-hmm. We have to fight for that belief, and we have to fight for that. And as we mentioned last week, you know, the proof is in the pages it's yes. in the book of, of the, it's the word of god yes. and that's what we stand on yes that's right that's right yeah. and and so anyway that was on my heart just a critical spirit and and i've had a critical spirit before we all have. we all have we all have and i've also had some people that have told me how the cat ate the cabbage and i'm glad they did mm, yeah sometimes we have to we have to dish out we have to have that critical spirit but then again we have to listen to that's right that's, that's right that's we right. all do Hey, what else are we going to talk about well, this morning you know when we come what? back? I got a great Perry Stone story All I want right. to share with you, yeah. so maybe that'll be next. And did you hear, I don't know if you heard or not, but the uh, Satanic Temple uh, displayed a statue of Satan in Detroit. They unveiled it Saturday <gasps> night. Have you heard that story? Oh, no, we need to chat about yeah, that. Yeah, we need to chat about oh that, and they're my. wanting to move that. Oh, And 
it's uh, opening up a lot of eyes to people that need to stand up. Now is the time to stand up for the Word of yes, God yes, yes. and stand up for what this country is founded on. Uh-huh. And we need to, everything else is going to where, hey, we don't like this, we don't like that. Now we need to voice our opinion. We don't like what happened Saturday night in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Oh so we'll come back and talk okay. more about that, all right? Great. As we're heading into 9 o'clock, we're going to be giving away some more room tickets also next hour, Laura. So stay tuned. More to come as it is 9 o'clock. The Vine Morning Show on this Monday continues at Real Life Radio. This is your home for best. Welcome back in. It's the Vine Morning Show here on a Monday morning. I'm Mark along with Laura. Good morning, Laura. Mm, good morning, Mark. And uh, you, you have something you want to share from Perry Stone this morning. Yeah. Some good teaching there. Yeah. You know, he just, he always has some good stories. And this one, he says, there are lots of things that never make the news. Mm -hmm. Or if they make the news, they don't make much of the news. And he said that I had this buddy who's an evangelist in Egypt. And he says, Perry, I want to tell you something. He says, he said that same thing. You won't (laughs) see this on the news. You won't hear this on the news. Or if you do, it's just a tiny little bit. He says, things are moving over here. God is moving. And, you know, when we think of Iran, we immediately think of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And we immediately think, you know, death to Israel, death to America, and it's kind of spooky. But the Christians are telling us, the evangelists are telling us that people are getting saved like crazy over there. Wow. Wow. And I think Iran is growing in Christianity faster than anywhere else in the world. Can you imagine that? I'm I'm happy to hear that. Me yeah, too. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. But you but but you don't really hear it on the on the national level. You, you know, don't, unless it's through a ministry or right, something. Right, exactly. And so, anyhow, this friend of Perry Stones, he's an evangelist from Egypt, and he said there is some major spiritual networking that's going on now. He said he felt laid on his heart to get an internet church going. And he succeeded, and he said he has gotten over 200,000 letters and emails from people from Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Really? Wow, how awesome is that? Isn't it great? Yeah. They're contacting him. They're asking him, how do you get to know Jesus? How do you pray? Mm. They want to know. Wow. And I just think, wow, we need we need to know this. And he said, I want to tell you something else that that um, that is an incredible story. He said in Egypt, I guess it was Egypt, he said that the kids were starting to, you know, kind of have an uprising. And they're tired of not making any money, tired of not getting any jobs. And and they went to the square. I mean, maybe tens of thousands of them. It was going to kind of have a rally. Mm-hmm. Well, the government sent in, I mean, all these tanks and stuff and w- was starting to surround them. Well, all of the Christian kids there started realizing what was happening and they wanted to defend these other kids and they felt like what they were standing up for was was the right thing you know a kid likes to defend another kid and and they have camaraderie and, and unity and so anyhow tens of thousands of these christian kids rallies together and mark you never believe what they did they surrounded the muslim kids oh wow surrounded them wow so that the tanks and the government could not touch them and the muslim kids you know they're so close and mm-hmm. and you know here's all the christian kids surrounding all the muslim kids they're like why are you doing this i said well we believe in your cause and we just wanted to stand with you and i said well that's great you've got the government off our back i mean the tanks are leaving and and this is incredible we want to know what we can do for you and i said we have an idea we're having church service here on sunday and would you surround our building and protect us from your government And they said, we'll do it. Wow. And so all the Christian kids, thousands of Christian kids are in this huge building and they're having their church service. The Muslim kids surrounds their building. Whoa, that just brings tears to my eyes, Mark. Yeah, it sure does. And little by little, the Muslim kids were peeking their heads in, going into the church service and having a turned around life. Now, that right there shows you God is working, God is moving, things are already happening, Mm -hmm. that kids, just college kids, Mm -hmm. could turn that little world around, at least for a moment, and impress upon these other kids. You know, these kids are like, we both want freedom. 
We both want freedom. And it's like they found a common denominator, a common bond, and it changed lives. And I just think that is just such an amazing story. That it just is. made me happy, yeah. and I just wanted to, to pass that forward. So yeah. yeah, that's awesome to be able to know that there are actually children that are dying, or not dying, but craving yeah. to know our God. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, um, you know, fads change. Sure. And, and things change. And it seems like for so long, the fad was to be as bad as you can and, mm-hmm. and Miley Cyrus, Cyrus to shock people, you mm-hmm. know. People are tired of being shocked. Mm-hmm. They're tired of that. Everybody's done that. And it's like the shocking thing now is when a kid actually turns out good and they do right things and they make good choices. They're the ones that's standing out in the crowd. They're not the nerd. They're not the you know the square of the room. It's like they are the, the shining element. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, they're becoming leaders. Kids are really getting... They're, they're running to God. Sure. And Perry Stone said God laid it on his heart that he would be a father of many. And he says, I really didn't know what that meant 20 years ago, a father of many. He says, now that we have a group of kids in our church, I don't know, um, like when they had these special get-togethers, there's like three or 4,000 going around calling him Papa Perry. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. That's, that's just great. And, and I think they have training in schools and all this stuff. And people, they're pouring into the kids. We have figured out, Mark, we have figured out that our focus, and Rodney has said this for years, don't let the focus of the church be the adults. Where did we get that? Yeah. Most people that's going to get saved are going to get saved before the age of 25. 20. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, there's a little bit of varying wow. in that number. So why don't we focus on these kids? Why don't we get things geared to the kids? Why don't we have things that, that involve the kids, get these kids off the streets and, and get some activity and start putting our focus and prayers on these young people because not to, to let our adults fall to the wayside, but to encourage the ones to come mm-hmm. and the ones most likely to get saved. Well, and, and with the world the way it is now and the way it's going, uh, these kids are being taught things that, you know, it's like, no, 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 that's not what you're supposed to, that's not what you're supposed to learn. That's not what you're supposed to be taught. When we look back at our lives, how we were raised and grown up and right. were growing up, and, you know, this world, it, the way it is going, it is rough on oh. our young oh. Are young kids these oh. days? And Mark, what did you you showed me that picture of that yes. satanic? And there's little children. Yeah, what it is? It's a, the the statue. It's a statue. It's uh, it was unveiled uh, Saturday night in Detroit, Michigan. It was an eight foot foot tall bronze statue, which features a goat headed Satan. With uh, was revealed to hundreds of ticket holders at a private event in the city. And, it, and when you look at this statue, it's like, whoa. Mm. And and then there's two small children looking up at this yes. statue. I mean, yes. I showed you that. And it, it, when I looked at it, it gave me cold chills down my spine. Oh, that's so creepy to look at. But, yeah. And they unveiled it Saturday night in Detroit, Michigan. Oh, that's painful. I thank God I don't live in Detroit, Michigan. That scares me. <laughs> and their ultimate goal, get this, is to display it, uh, this uh, large statue in Oklahoma, Next to the Ten Commandments monument. Yes. And why would they do that? Why? That's why? just silliness. Wow. But that goes to show you where our world is at right That's now. That's right. That's right. And I told you um, off air that John Heggie's been preaching on demonic activity. Mm-hmm. And he told some stories that would just absolutely make your, your blood curl. I mean, it was it was really frightening. And he talked about how America... If you don't think satanic teaching and satanic churches Mm -hmm. are on the rise in America, he said, just go to your television and just scan down and just look at all the Satan-inspired shows and movies. And, you know, he also said the most powerful form of communication in the world is through movies. Mm -hmm. And you think about that. Yeah, it is. Another thing that he said, I didn't know about this, 35 million copies of Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. this movie, it's or this a, uh, It's video. a video game. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he said that it shows you can decapitate a police officer. Mm. It's very violent. Yeah, and you can burn his body, and, and I'm just like, oh, my mm-hmm. goodness, you got to be kidding. That should have been banned. That should have been outlawed. And then these kids are watching this for hours and hours and hours, and then they want to go kill a cop. Well, mm-hmm. I wonder why. Mm-hmm. I wonder why. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that is the, a very violent video game that a lot of young kids have today, and a lot of young kids get addicted by that game. Oh, I'm sure. And, you know, when you stop and you think, okay, a child, or a child, a young child plays that game over and over and over, yes. what's that teaching them? Right. Violence. Exactly. Violence and... And it's just dwelling it in their mind. Right, and that the police officer's the enemy. Mm-hmm. It just breaks my heart. It's like, what kind of a message is this sending our youth? Are you kidding me? These people are fighting on our behalf. They're putting their life on the line every single day. You know, the next thing that's going to come, they're going to take the guns away from the police officers mm-hmm. and, and give them a, a little stick with a fluffy pillow glued on the end of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. How are they going to do their job mm-hmm. without force? Mm-hmm. And we're just taking rights away all over the place and, and, and yeah, giving our babies and our children a video game that says be cruel to a police officer. And the thing is, when they're put in a situation where they have to make a split-second decision, right. sometimes you just don't know what kind of situations you get into. Absolutely. And, yeah, we have to we have to know that, okay, there's going to be times they make human error. Mm-hmm. They're doing the best they can. Mm-hmm. I'm just so grieved by it. And, and Satan is growing in our nation. He is just getting into every little nook, every little cranny, and just every area. I mean, down to selling baby parts. Mm, mm. Selling baby parts. Really? Mm -hmm. Have we stooped that low, people? Mm. Have we really gone that far? And then this area, we've just just hit rock bottom just everywhere we go. Just stripping down everything, stripping down the rights, taking it all down to bare nothing, to where we just... Our, our nation doesn't even resemble the nation that it once was. You know, and you, you're giving awards to people that don't rightly deserve them, and it should fall into someone else's, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and we all know what mm-hmm. we're talking about mm-hmm. here, you know, and, okay. uh, and that's very sad. Yeah, it is very it sad. It really is. It goes back to what we talked about last week. Evil's good, good's evil, and it's getting more that way rapidly. Mm-hmm. The Christians keep saying that word rapidly urgency i have an urgency in my spirit an urgency in my heart the world is just caving just just like an avalanche well you know know, we were talking to the other day look at the prophetic dreams more and more people are having Mm -hmm. all the time Mm -hmm. you know people that normally they don't dream they're having these dreams and and it's like you know it's a wake-up call yes you You know it is a wake-up call you know those dreams are happening for a reason you're right you know what my nephew cody he said yesterday he said i had a dream that we were having church in a coal mine and i said Mm-hmm. That says a lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Rick Weil says the true church will go underground soon. Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, you can't get any more underground than a coal mine. Than a coal mine. Yeah. Wow. wow. And Mina Griebens, have you listened to her? I've not heard anything okay. from her. Okay. She's an African-American woman in her 30s. Woo! She's on fire. She had a dream that um, and something about Jesus had spoken to her in this dream that every 10 people that prays to me, I only know one. Oh, wow. That's not secular. That's not the worldly. That's 10 people, ten people praying to me. I only know one. Oh, my. And that just make you hurt all oh, over, that, Mark? I tell you what, that's like a sucker punch to the gut. It is. It really it is. is. A lot wow. of truth in it, though. Wow. Think about it. It is. It is. All right. We're going to come back talk more with Laura here in a moment. Welcome back. Yeah, it is the Vine Morning Show here on Monday. I'm Mark, along with Laura. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mark. And uh, something else you you sent me last night that you always send me the previews of the yeah. what we're going to talk about the uh, the night before is something by David Wilkerson. It's called Run. Yes, is that right? Yes, yes. And still, I know I've brought this up before. If you get the opportunity to get on YouTube and hear David David Wilkerson say this, it, it's like um, you know maybe a page mm-hmm. of him talking about getting in a real church, getting really rooted deeply with the Lord. Um, The passion in his voice, I just couldn't even come near what it's like when you hear him say it. Right, right. So I would encourage anybody, all you got to do is punch in David Wilkerson and run, and you'll get it. And it's passionate. It, oh, it's so good. But these words written by actually, I believe it's one of his uh, pastors in his church, Carter Conlon, uh, delivered this soul-stirring message at Times Square Church in Manhattan. And, yeah, it's a big church, but, boy, they 
They work there. Oh, wow. They certainly work. So wow. I'll read this to you. It'll take a few minutes. That's okay. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah. On the first Sunday following the tragedy of September 11, 2001, Carter Conlon delivered this soul-stirring message at Times Square Church in Manhattan. The sermon was titled, Run for Your Life. And it's certainly worth the effort to listen to it in its entirety. He said, listen to me like you've never listened to me ever in your life. We have got to lay our lives down for the purposes of God. This is not a Sunday school picnic, the Church of Jesus Christ. This is not an invitation to have continuous good times. This is a war for the souls of men. Come out from among them. Run for your life because this is about your life. This is not just about an opposing theological or conflicting viewpoint on Jesus. This is about your life. My mind is forever branded with the stories that I heard of police officers from the city of New York. As people were fleeing from a crumbling building, there were police officers and firemen and others that were running towards the building saying, run for your life at their own peril. And in some cases, I believe they knew they were going to die. But there was a sense of duty. I was crying out to God. I said, God, oh Jesus, don't let my sense of duty be less for your kingdom than those beloved firemen and policemen were the, for those that are perishing in that falling tower. We're living in a generation when the truth is falling into the streets. I want to be among those that are not running away from the conflict, but running into the conflict and saying, run for your life. Run from the gospels that focus only on success and prosperity. Run. Run from those who use the name of Christ only for personal gain. Run from those who are picking your pockets in the name of Jesus. Run. Run from the gospels that only focus on self-improvement. Run. Run from the churches where men are and not Christ, are glorified. Run. Run from the body of Christ. Run, body of Christ, run. Get out. Don't touch the unclean thing. Run from the churches in America and Canada where there is no Bible. There's no cross in the theology. There's no soul-searching word. There's no repentance from sin. There's no mention of the blood of Jesus. Run. It's unclean. Run. Run from the churches where you are comfortable in your sins. If you come into the house of God and you've got sin in your life and you're not convicted of it, you are at a table of devils. Run from the pulpits that are filled with political men who are using the pulpit for God, the pulpit of God for a personal political agenda. Run. Run from those who preach division between races and cultures. Run. Run. Get out. Turn it off. Get away from it. They know nothing of God. Run from ungodly movements and aimless, empty prophesying. Beloved church, run for your life. Run from preachers that stand and tell stories and jokes. Run like you've never run before. Run, run, run. Wow. Ooh, that's a mouthful, wow. isn't it? Yeah, but, but listen to what, the, if you're listening and you're paying attention to what it said, it's like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And you wow. think about it, um, no repentance from sin. You don't hear that word mm -hmm. repentance much, Not do much. you? Mm -hmm. You don't hear that word humble yourselves, you know, in front of God. And, 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 oh, this one, to me, this is one of the biggest statements. Run from the churches where you are comfortable in your sins. If you come to the house of God and you've got sin in your life and you're not convicted of it, you are at a table of devils. Mm. Ooh, mm. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's read, pretty read firm. That, read that again if okay, you Okay, not at all. Run from the churches where you are comfortable in your sins. If you come to the house of God and you've got sin in your life and you're not convicted of it, you are at a table of devils. Wow. Mark. <laughs> And we know that's true. That is very true, yes. My goodness, my wow. goodness. You know, Rodney preached a really hard sermon a few weeks ago, and we've hardly had anybody since. Mm. And I know that he's wondered, 
was it that hard sermon? And you know, if it was, good. Yeah. Shake off the ones that's not really on time. We're not there for numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need big numbers. If those, if those ones, if that's the case, and those that has hasn't come back based on that reason, if they feel convicted, they'll uh-huh. be back. Yes. Because they're they're hungry for more. Right, right. If they really want to get right with God, they'll come back and they won't mind. We all get our toes stepped on. Oh, yeah. We all do, and we deservingly, and we need to. But if you're just there to make yourself feel good and just happy, happy, and I I went to church and pat myself on the back. a social event. A social event. What a lot of people look at it as. You you know, know. I had a fella tell me that once. He said, you know, we we never did go to church, but we're starting to go, and it's really good for business. And I thought, oh. Mm. Wow, really? Mm, mm, mm. It's a real good social networking thing, really? Mm. Yeah, if that's in your heart, you know, God knows the secrets of our heart. He knows the motives. He knows what we're really feeling, why we do this and why we do that. And that's convicting, you know. Mm -hmm. Think, okay, why are you really doing this? You know, do you have the right heart? Do you have the right reasons? Or you just want somebody to see you doing it? Or is it going to benefit you some way down the road and in the long end of things? Mm -hmm. God knows. Mm -hmm. God knows. But yes, um, there are still some real preachers in this land. And I know there's some of them that's not doing the right thing. But pray for the discernment to, you know, decipher who's on it and who's not. And that's a good thing to go by. If you can sit there and you're, you know, I always say shacking up with somebody or, you know, you're doing this or you're doing that. and, And you're cheating on your wife or you're in this mess or you're, you know, drugging and whatever you're just gossiping that's bad too you know oh that goes guilty. on in the church yes absolutely absolutely our mouths Woo! the christians that that you know and just like what you said all sin all sin you know but we've got to have a repentant heart we've got to want to do better we've got to want to yearn and even though we're never going to make it yeah. Got to work on it. And some people, for the, every all those you mentioned, are afraid to go to church. But but if if you fall under any of those categories, repent. Don't look back and move forward. Yes. God will forgive you, and you can That's start your it. life all over again. That's as simple as it is. That's exactly right. And we're all committing different sins, and we all have our weaknesses and and our areas where we're not very strong in. But but yeah, having an, a re- repentant heart every day, we need to have a repentant heart. Mm. I think Christians think just because I got saved. I'm done. There's some people that really believe that you better get to repenting every single day because an unrepentant heart can become hardened. Yeah, I like that. I like what you said, and that's so true, though. Mm-hmm. It, it is. is. All right. We're going to come back here in a few moments and talk more with Laura. But right now, it's time for Hope Out Loud with a member of the Barrick family this morning. It's being underwritten by Alan Monroe, CPA in McLeansboro. Real Life Radio Foundation is blessed by. Yeah, they're on tour together. Of course, Matthew West uh, was a former uh, finalist on, uh, I believe, American Idol. Oh, really? At one point in time, or, yeah, I think so, here uh, a few years ago. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, been on American Idol. And uh, Colton's now been taken under the wings of my, um, of uh, Matthew West. And, wow. uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? Wow. To know. Yeah. That, pretty good deal. So, that yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so there you go. Again, another up and rising. Uh, artist who uh who's been on uh, programs like that american idol and has uh gone into the contemporary christian music scene it's yes. it's awesome to know yeah that, that there right. are many many of them out there doing that that's right that's right we need all the help we can get because it's a it's a big department that, that is right needs yes. to broaden you know this exactly. could be harvest time with everything falling apart the way that it is oh and, my goodness and you know this should be our harvest time for the saints and and for us to help pull these people and and grasp them from the fire you know from the flames and and run i like that run and mm-hmm. and urgency you know we've got to get this urgency and and believing that jesus christ is coming very very soon makes us act differently makes us run our life differently oh that's true and all of the things in the news and you know this is just one thing my mom told me that the drought in california you know the californians are painting their grass green well there were some areas out there that the lakes have dry have dried up and uh hasn't seen water in for for soul for how long a long time it's been a very long time and it's the worst drought per the experts for 1200 years oh my goodness yeah and so all these things you know to me they're 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 having a hand in prophecy 
you know, prophecy is history written in advance. Mm -hmm. And there's all sorts of ways that this prophecy can unfold. And, and the prophecy of famines, you know, there will be no food. You know what Jim Baker said the other day? What was that? He says, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say this. He's this 20 year shelf life food. Mm -hmm. It's going so rapidly, Mark. He says, I expect that by the first of September, there will be no more. Wow. On the shelf. Wow. Yes, that's wow. that's what he's saying. This, uh, I believe he meant his food, the 20-year shelf life food, was going so rapidly. He said, I'm just going to say it, that I really believe by the 1st of September that we won't have any more of this shelf well, life food. Well, there you go. They're talking about here again, focusing on September is going to be a yes, big month there. Yes, yes. Wow. And, you know, you were talking about dreams and, and visions again. There are so many you just can't hardly keep hold of. And, and God said he would do it. You know, in the last days I will pour out my spirit and, and the young men will have visions and the old men will have dreams or, you know, I always get that mixed up. But nevertheless, there are so many people that are having these. And Mina Grebens, she's a good one to look up in my opinion. I mm -hmm. really, really like this girl from what I've seen of her. And she says she's been having dreams since she was a little girl. And she, she said she even had a dream about who uh, the president would be right now and knew he would be from Chicago when she was a oh, little girl. Wow. She told her mom this, and, and she said that she had a dream recently that she saw an old alarm clock and uh, with the two bells like on top, and it was 30 seconds till midnight. Oh, my goodness. And get this. It gets even deeper. She said she, her programs goes on the Internet, and I guess her mom couldn't sleep that night. Her mom lives in a different town, and she was up in the middle of the night, and she heard uh, Mina's broadcast. And she says, at 3.13 in the morning, my phone rings, and it's my mom. She said, I was scared death something was wrong. She goes, oh, no, I just listened to your broadcast. And she said, three weeks ago, I had an identical dream. The same dream. The same dream, that old alarm clock, 30 seconds till midnight. Oh, my goodness. Woo, 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 you know? Wow. A lot of people say, and they're all saying the same thing. They're, how can we deny it? Mm -hmm. God does nothing without first warning his prophets. We know by what the prophets are saying that judgment is coming, it's coming fast, and that his return is coming, and it's coming fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, look at Perry Stone, John Hagee, and yes. many of those that yes. have been talking about it for oh, years. Oh, yes, yes. Jonathan yeah. Kahn and Mark Filtz and, and Bill Cloud. And, and you just look up these guys, and, and they know. They, they know. It's just common knowledge. And it's really strange to me, in a way, hearing them all just talk about it just so openly now. It's finally like the floodgate has been open, and they're just common knowledge. I mean, we got to get ready. The tribulation is at the door. Yeah. The seven years tribulation is close at hand, and they just say it like it's nothing. They all know Michelle Bachman, mm -hmm. you know, is talking, and um, um, Billy Graham's daughter is talking. Yeah, and Graham Lotz. And mm -hmm. Graham Lotz, right, just, you know, that we're on the brink. Of the end. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Good stuff with Laura this morning here on the Vine Morning Show.